Hello everybody, and welcome to another in a series of short videos that I'm creating that are designed to help you bring more clarity, confidence, and creativity to everything you do. For those of you who are new to this video series, my name is Dr. Bill Crawford. I'm a psychologist, a speaker, corporate trainer, life coach. I've had the pleasure of writing four books and doing two PBS specials. And each week I send out one of my favorite quotes, along with two or three paragraphs about how to apply that quote to life to about 5,000 subscribers. If you're not one of those subscribers, but you would like to receive my weekly quotes, all you got to do is go to my website, BillCrawfordPhD.com, hit the subscribe button, put your name and email address, and I will send you one of these quotes along with a short video each week. Today's topic looks at the concept of mistakes, failure, and blame. And it comes from a quote that's one of my own. It says, the only time a mistake becomes a failure is when we look for someone to blame. Now let's see if we can glean the wisdom from each aspect of that quote. For instance, let's first look at the concept of mistakes. I think we need to understand and recognize and just kind of be okay with the fact that we are mistake-making creatures. So we can't be perfect unless we're going to ascend sometime this afternoon. We're going to make a mistake or two. The challenge is when people make a mistake, they have a tendency to either beat themselves up, stupid, stupid, what was I thinking, blame themselves, or hey, hey, look for somebody else to blame. The problem with that is twofold. Number one, for those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know this tendency to need to beat ourselves up out of guilt or fear or shame or find someone else to blame out of anger, resentment, or frustration. That all drives us down to that lower 20% of the brain. It's a very reactive part of the brain. It's not a part of the brain where learning takes place. The place where we learn is in the upper 80% of the brain, the neocortex, the top of the mind. And in my humble opinion, a mistake ought to be about learning and not blame. Matter of fact, in my book, Life from the Top of the Mind, I talk about how we can look at a mistake as a mistake, an action that we took that missed. You know, if we... If we, in the movies, if they make a mistake, they just retake the scene. And they may need to retake that scene 25, 30 times to get it right. So they don't beat each other up or look for someone to blame or in some ways feel bad about flubbing a line or making a mistake. Now, I know some mistakes are more important than that. But still, what we want to do is learn from them. If all we can remember from a mistake is shame or guilt or blame, there's no learning down there. Or we have to feel shamed or guilt or, or, or bad before we can do it differently. By the same token, if we look for someone to blame, then there's no learning because we have to change them before something happens better in the future. So what I like to do is say, okay, given what I know now, how would I do that differently in the future? I want to take whatever didn't work and make it good information, or at least valuable information, about how I want to do it differently in the future. That engages the frontal lobes, those parts of the brain that are about the future. It engages my interpersonal skills, my problem-solving skills, all the knowledge I have and all the ability I have to look at a problem, analyze it, and get really clear about how I want to do this differently in the future. Then what I like to do is just imagine myself doing it differently. I can feel better already because I know I won't make that mistake in that same way again. If this is important to you, I would encourage you to begin to look at how we have a tendency sometimes when we make a mistake to either blame ourselves or look for others to blame. And instead, I would encourage you to consider that what we want to get from a mistake is not who's to blame, but what have we learned? How can we do it differently in the future? If you would like for me to come to your organization and create a presentation, help you, your colleagues, learn from their mistakes, and or leadership, and or stress management, or whatever, if you find my material and my perspective valuable, I encourage you to contact me. It's what I love to do, and I would love to talk to you about that. In the meantime, I hope you found this valuable. Try to keep these videos short. I know we're all busy. Here's to you, bringing more clarity, confidence, and creativity to everything you do. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.